Booty Bands and Barbells helps busy women sculpt and tone their bodies in just 15 minutes a day through our physical products and our one-on-one -on -one coaching. You and I had a podcast previous about your self-sabotage loop. And uh, I'm sure some, some might remember what that loop was. And it's actually been um, really helpful to share that cycle where a lot of women, actually every single one I share that with, they can relate to it. And what's beautiful is they immediately are able to grasp theirs because they use yours as an example. I wanted to check in on you and just kind of see how that loop's going. And you almost made me cry because you said that you aren't having those same beliefs anymore and you've had some amazing changes. So I just wanted to hear your story about how has it been since our last podcast? I don't have those same thoughts anymore. That never even enters into my thoughts at all. Like used to, it was a continual daily, all day, every day battle with myself. I don't even think those things anymore. They just don't happen. So what I'm going to do is actually share my screen. First step to change we know is awareness, conscious of what the subconscious is doing. One of your biggest struggles was being single and being overweight. And a trigger happened, I think you said it was around eight or nine years of age, where your mom got remarried and you had a, a fabulous new stepdad that came into the picture and said, hey, I just am um, wanting the family to be a little bit healthier. And that's when the mom came to you and said, all right, you guys, we're going to start eating healthier and we're going to start working out together. And in that moment, even though they did everything right, you just created a belief about yourself that something's wrong with you specifically. I need to be fixed and I'm broken. Am I on the same page as that? Yeah. Yes. Yeah. I'm not good enough. Yeah. Yeah. It was another one. Yeah. I'm not good enough. Okay. And then yeah. the next thought led to you seeing other people's success and then just having a lot of jealousy and that jealousy really rooted from, I wish I could have success, but if I'm, if you have a belief of I'm broken and I need to be fixed and I'm not enough, then clearly we can see where the jealousy came from. And then it right. led into just feeling like I'm a failure is the next thought. If, if we're scrolling down here, um, mm -hmm. that all accurate. Yes. Yes. Yeah. Too accurate. <laughs> too accurate uh yeah then the next one was the feeling so it left with an empty feeling a lot of loneliness and a lot of feelings of hopelessness and this is where you said kind of that empty void yes uh-huh and in the emptiness is where um, the immediate gratification, where all of us humans do it. I haven't met one person that hasn't done something that does immediate gratification. Watching too much television or some people, they'll end up putting more on their plate because they need to feel enough. So they'll end up overworking. Some people actually will end up uh, answering phone calls of a past loved one, which they shouldn't, you know, all sorts of things. Like I really, I've heard from A to Z, as far as all the different things in between that people do in this one. And so for you specifically, it was a kind of a feeling of giving up, going to eating ice cream and just eating something out of comfort in that moment, just to kind of get you out of that, that empty feeling. Right. That's it. I would still do a lot of the others too, like watching too much TV or just doing something, you know, you, you shouldn't be doing overindulging in something or, or talking again with somebody, you know, that was in the past and best belonged in the past, but yeah. Oh, interesting. Okay. So there's a little bit of some kind of, now that we have this understanding, we're able to also bring a little bit more things to the table that we didn't really think about. So now the awareness is opening up other things as far. And it explains why we did what we did, right? Because yep. sometimes we don't know why we did it. We we look back and we're like, but why did I answer that phone call? And now we know, now we know it came from that <laughs> void. Uh, so the next part is uh, the next action is you'd get really drained physically and mentally from all the bad foods and negative self-talk. And you would just get really low and really down on yourself which then created the outcome of you would self-isolate and you would avoid people and avoid yourself. Yep. Hence the reason, <laughs> hence the reason why we can see there was singleness because obviously if you're avoiding people, <laughs> right? And then hence why we're overweight, you're avoiding yourself. And yep. so what was the big realization when you kind of saw this, this whole loop put together? Um, I realized that I was worth it and I'm not broken and there's nothing wrong with me. And I have control over my destiny and I can change things. Yeah. And what was the realization? How did you get there? Um, I think we, we, the first step was we actually went back to that eight or nine year old little girl. So what, what did you uncover going back to that little, little girl? I uncovered that my parents had their own hangups and their own things going on and their decisions and like their suggestions didn't really have anything to do with me directly and they did mean well they weren't trying to be mean or spiteful when they wanted to get healthy as a family but 
they had their own stuff going on and it had nothing to reflect on me as a child and what was wrong with me because there's nothing wrong with me. Yeah. And so what was the new beliefs that you created that was instead of I am not enough and I'm a failure and all those things, what, what was a shift? What is your truth? I am worthy. I am enough and I can do anything I put my mind to. <laughs> Wow. And so now how has the thoughts and the feelings and the actions been when you're coming from a place of your truth? It's a lot more liberating and I feel a lot better. I don't have like this big, heavy burden on my back anymore. And it's just, it's just freeing. <laughs> yeah. So yeah, give us some details. What's been some of the transitions? What are some of the things that have been almost the opposite of what this, this used to be? Yeah. Well, I can't tell you the last time I had ice cream. <laughs> so there's that. <laughs> and that used to be like my nightly after work, like treat yourself thing. I, it's been a long time. Maybe, maybe someone's birthday. I don't know. But it's been a long time. Um, and I made some decisions in my life. I sold my house and I'm building a barn dominium next to my parents. And I've been getting out more and doing more things. And my lunch hour every day I work out in my office since I don't have my own space anymore at home. So I work out at work and on my lunch hour. So I take that time for me since that's about all the time I get for me. Those are some big drastic things. And so just a tiny little switch in the railroad track can all of a sudden start to really create different outcomes. Have you starting to see that starting to happen that just those little tiny adjustments are making a little bit more of an impact? They are, they are. And I'm a lot happier overall, just with this new mindset. I'm not down on myself anymore. I don't, when I get ready for work in the morning, I'm not like, ugh. you know how we all criticize ourselves or whatever. I'm like, eh, it works. It's good. It works. It looks good. Let's go. I'm not like shrinking into myself at work or used to, I kind of felt bad for other people having to look at me, but now I'm like, I'm here taking up space. Look at, look at me. <laughs> I'm here. <laughs> I remember that. I remember that conversation. Yeah. You said, um, you used to feel bad that other people had to look at you and almost like you would start to try to shrink yourself mm -hmm. to, to try to not be seen. Wow. I do remember that conversation. And yeah. so now, now the confidence that you exude right there of just explaining that. So what is it just more like chest up and just like conversations? Like what kind of, what kind yeah. of shift is that? It's even walking like through the halls at work. Like you used to, I'd be like, your head down, looking down, wouldn't try to make eye contact. Like, I don't want to make you have to engage in conversation with me. And now my head's up and I'm looking at people. I'm like, hey, how's it going? Are you having a good day? Like I'm, I make them engage instead of trying to avoid it now. Wow. Okay. So let's go ahead and go into what is this. So now that we've heard all this, let's go ahead and put it into what's called the self-love loop, which is the opposite of the self-sabotage. So if we, go, if we go back to it, we can actually just go trail down and now show everybody that's listening right now. So if we go back to the trigger, right, of when she was eight or nine years old, what she did is she had to go back to that event and she had to recreate what she, the belief that she was identifying herself with. And that new belief was, say it again, it was, I am what? Worthy. Yeah. And I not broken. <laughs> Yeah. And so in that place of power and her truth, right, is she re-identified that whatever her mom and her dad were going through wasn't her and that she created that own belief. And now, which is, it's, it's true. It has a great feeling as we know that that's really what it is, which leads down to a thought. When you're feeling I'm worthy, what's the next thought that comes up for you? I'm worthy. I, I can do anything. And I'm just as deserving as anybody else of anything in life. Mm. Yeah, absolutely. And uh, before you would have like those empty feelings and loneliness and feelings of hopelessness, if you ever feel those feelings again, what are some of the things that you do as far as instead of going to ice cream, like you said, you haven't had in a while, what are some things you do when you're kind of feeling that low? I get up and move. I do something. I go, if it's, it's not like my lunch break where I go work out, I get up and I go walk around the building just to get up and move and change the scenery. Or I go driving around and listen to my favorite music and it always perks me up or just sometimes I meditate and just breathe in and think about all the things I do have and remind myself that I'm not, you know, it's, I, when I turned 40, I got to this point where I was like, oh my gosh, I'm 40 and single and my life is over and I've squandered my youth and it, this is it. And 
I'm only 40. Come on, stop it. <laughs> I love it. That's awesome. The little pep talks in the car. That's great. <laughs> And so some of the actions you're saying, and, and so instead of shrinking yourself like you did before, now you're really starting to own your space and you're being able to talk to others and being able to go out and, and um, be social. The other thing you mentioned is now taking that time for yourself. We wouldn't want to take our time for ourselves if we're feeling like we're not enough, but now that we're coming from a place of I am worthy and I am enough, now being able to take that lunch break and do something for yourself is uh, obviously an, an aftermath. It's, it's going to be the outcome. That's awesome. Yes. So um, a lot of people that I share this, um, they go through their loop. They would like to have an immediate transformation. Like they want the next day for them to wake up and all to be gone. <laughs> right? Yeah. In a perfect world. Yeah. <laughs> so my question for you is, how, what was that transition? How long did it take? And what was kind of, if you could, if somebody's listening right now on the call and they're like, how long does it take to go from the old you to the new you? About six months. And even then early on, there's still some days where you're just like emotional, like fighting through it, like fighting, your, fighting your old demons to remind yourself that you aren't what you thought you were. Mm. It pretty much rewire your brain. Mm -hmm. Yeah, that's actually really what you what you did is you yeah. were in what's called a neurological pathway loop. And what our neurons, what they wired together, they fired together. And so what happens is when we become really aware, you guys of the conscious, the conscious mind can actually create new neurons and create more, different pathways. And it does take some time. And it, it can take sooner, it can take longer. It really is up to you on if you want to continue to believe the faults limiting beliefs, or if you want to really believe your truth. And every single time I've sat down with somebody and said, well, is it really true that you're not enough? And every single time when they hear the word truth, they're like, well, no, the truth is I've always been enough. And I'm like, well, then why aren't we sticking to our truth? Right. We're very good at lying to ourselves. Yeah, absolutely. And I think the reason why is because it's comfortable because it's what we've known ever since being young and coming right. into this world with so many different elements, we're trying to figure out how we fit in and it can take just one little incident in our life that can throw us into a belief of I'm not enough. And right. it is, and it turns comfortable because then we start living a loop of we know what we know and we right. didn't know how to live a loop of I'm enough. And so how scary was that for you to almost kind of go, wait, I got to go out of comfort into the unknowns. What was that like? It was, it was a struggle at first because, you know, like your insecurities are kind of like a comfortable old blanket. Like you cover yourself up in the blanket and you're like, okay, I'm not getting out. <laughs> and then once you slowly take the blanket off, it get, you're kind of exposed and you're uncomfortable. But after a while... It feels great. <laughs> mm. That's very well said. I think that's exactly how I imagine it too, is like that, that blanket that's covering you. And I think even a lot of women are actually using that blanket as weight, where that yeah. weight is a form of protection. And they think, oh, well, nobody will look at me if I do this. Or, you know, I, I do think that that yep. I've heard many times that's a form of protection. Um, so, yep. so thank you for sharing that metaphor. So um, just from your heart, if you could speak from your heart right now, I want you to really think about somebody that's listening on this call right now. And they just are really starting to see that they've got a loop and they're going to try to get out of it, but they, they need that like, is it really worth it? Is there, is there really hope? Is there, am I really enough? Like, you know, they've all got kind of that doubt, I guess, in their head and they have that blanket on and you're about ready to take the blanket off. What are some words of encouragement um, that you can speak from your heart right now? You are totally worth the time and effort to break these beliefs because you are worth so much more than you give yourself credit for. Cause I have been there totally. I was in a dark, dark, place and it's so freeing and liberating and just, you're so much happier when you get out of it and break that loop yeah thanks for sharing that and I just wanted to also share my own personal one and um I also had a belief of I wasn't enough and I had no idea the all the things that I was doing to actually try to make up 
for that belief. Uh, common things that I found that I was doing was overworking. I was people pleasing and I was adding so much on my plate that I was getting so burnt out that I actually couldn't even really be the leader or the, the person I wanted to become. And it wasn't until I went to the belief of I'm not enough. I really looked at it and went, is that really my truth? And as soon as I found my truth and I was like, no, I am enough. That is when, and I, like you said, it, it does take some time. All right, you guys, I'm not going to say it's an overnight fix, but if you, as soon as you start to wake up in the morning and really go into your truth and you wake up and you really go, you know what I am? That is when I, the shift happened for me, the shift of the people pleasing has gone. The overworking has mitigated. I'm starting to now notice that like I am more open in this world and things are now have like a door to come in my life. All success is now sitting in my lap. And I'm like, how did it get here? So realize a little tiny adjustment you guys can make an extremely big outcome. So if you're struggling with something, whether it's weight, the love of your life or success in your business, look in the mirror. You are in a loop. And we're creating our own realities. And so as soon as you realize that and you operate from a place of your truth, you can and you will get what you desire. It truly is. It's because you now have the control. But before when we're victims, we don't have control when we're victims. So really challenge yourself as, as we say, we're victorious over our victimhoods. If you need some help, uh, you can click the link down below where we can jump on a call with your coach and be able to walk you through it. So thanks again, Jennifer, for your time. Is there any last words that you'd like to give anything else that you would like to share before we jump off? Do it. Just get out of your own way and get out of your own head and just do it. it you'll, you'll, life will be so much better and you'll be so much happier. Thank you for being whew, vulnerable, for sharing your example and just stepping outside of your comfort zone. I remember your very first podcast with us and I just remember you were going towards those uncomforts and that is where we grow you guys. So taking off that blanket that she was saying, and it's really beautiful to see that she's stepping into all these different areas of growth. And I'm, I'm very excited. I would like to continue to be in your journey as you share your wins along the way and any things that you need, just let us know, but we would love to see where you go in the next couple of years and see the outcome change as it's starting to already. I'll be here. <laughs> Love it. Have an amazing rest of your day. Thanks so much for jumping on. You too. Thank Bye, you. Honey. Bye, honey. If you are interested in the Sculpt and Tone accountability program with Coach Danita, go ahead and click the link down below and schedule a call with a coach now. There are limited spots available and we do need full commitment. If you're ready for a transformation, if you're ready for interest to be lost and you're ready for it to be easier, then this is your sign. Let's get started.